Hey everyone! I've had some requests to do some more cat projects, and I've also been wanting to do a needle felt tutorial, so I figured I'd merge the two together and make some needle felted cat toys. It's pretty straightforward, so let's get started. You'll need some wool, a felting needle, a felting surface. Typically, people use a foam block or a bristle brush, but I'm using a burlap pillow thing that I made. If you're interested in learning how to make one of these, stay tuned next week and I'll show you how. And some goodies to put in the middle of the toy. These are optional. First, I'll show you the one that I laced with catnip. I thought it would be cute to make this one into the shape of a little leaf. Take a chunk of wool and lay it on your felting surface. I'm using a different color than what the leaf will be, but you don't have to do that. If you're going to make a green leaf, then you can totally just use the same green for this core. Pour out some of the catnip into the middle and roll it up. Now start stabbing it with the needle. You want to be sure to periodically reposition the wool to keep it from felting into the felting surface. The reason wool fibers felt together has to do with how the fibers are made up. Like human hair, wool fibers have tiny scales all over them. However, the wool fiber scales stick out way more. So when the fibers are rubbed together, whether with hot soapy water, like in my cat cave video, which showed how to wet felt, or through stabbing it with a felting needle, like in this video, where it's appropriately called needle felting, they hook onto each other. So whenever you felt, essentially you're just creating a big ball of tangled fur. Also, you can't just use a normal needle to felt. You have to use a special needle made specifically for needle felting. You can see here how it has tiny hooks all over it, and these grab the felt and pull it down, rubbing them against the rest of the wool fibers as you stab. A normal needle is smooth, so it would just pass by all the fibers without doing anything. Be mindful of your fingers. Getting stabbed with that needle hurts. They sell finger covers that you can wear while you felt, but I like to live on the edge. Take a larger piece of felt in the color that you want the leaf to be and wrap it around the core. Mine ended up being about palm sized before I began felting it. The felting process shrinks it down a bit since it packs the fibers together when it tangles up. So you want to use more than you think you need. Now start stabbing it all over. Once it starts to hold itself together, you can concentrate on shaping it. Make it into a triangle-like shape by concentrating on stabbing at the sides of the wool like so. Once it's in a triangle-ish kind of shape, start stabbing it into the small side of the triangle to make it into sort of a soft heart shape. Now take a small piece of brown wool, twist it between your fingers to make a long snake of wool, and place it on the leaf like so. Start stabbing at it to join it to the leaf. Make sure you felt this part really good so your cat doesn't just rip it right off when they start playing with it. Repeat this with smaller pieces of brown wool to make the rest of the veins of the leaf. I gave my leaf another once over with the needle to make sure that it was felted really tightly. 
My cat likes to rip toys up, especially if they have catnip in them or on them, so I tried to make it as dense as I could without breaking my felting needle. I did, however, fall a little bit short, as you'll see at the end, because he was able to start ripping this one up. Of course, I took it away and I refelted it, which is an advantage of felted toys, actually. They're pretty easy to repair, and now I only let him have it when I can watch him to make sure he doesn't eat the dang thing. Anyway, once you have all the veins attached and the leaf is felted nice and tight, you're done. Next, I'll show you a toy that I stuck some jingly balls in. When I went to my local craft store, they only had these really tiny jingly balls, but I suggest getting bigger ones than this. They normally have bigger ones at the craft store. I don't know what happened, somebody must have had some project where they needed to buy out all the big ones, so there were none when I went to get some for this project, so I just settled on these little ones. They didn't work as well, so I really suggest getting the bigger ones. Basically, you're going to repeat the first step of the catnip toy, but with the jingly ball instead of catnip. I actually stuck two of these in the middle instead of just one since they were so tiny. And again, I used a different color for the core than the finished project, but that's not necessary. Now start felting. Take it slow when you're felting this one. There's metal in the middle and if you just stab at it wildly, you'll probably hit the bells and break your needle, which is no good. Once it's pretty tight, take another, bigger chunk of wool and wrap it around and start felting. I decided to just make this one into a ball, so all you would have to do is stab it all over evenly and it'll form into a ball. If you didn't use enough felt and it starts to shrink down too much, then all you need to do is add more wool and keep felting. Once it's felted tightly and it's as big as you want it, then you're done. And now this last one. It was kind of an experiment and it actually ended up working out pretty decently, so I decided to include it. Some cats really like toys that crinkle, and I have heard of people making toys stuffed with plastic bags, so I thought that I would try something similar with a felted toy. I had this leftover packaging from the blue wool, so I just crumbled it up into a ball, wrapped it with wool, and started felting. I ended up making this one slightly into an egg shape. I also didn't felt it quite as densely as the other two, so you can squish this one and it still makes the crinkly noise. And there we go! Three types of needle felted cat toys. As you can tell, the catnip laced one is Gremlin's favorite. I hope you all enjoyed this project. If you did, then please leave a like. And if you want to see more, then feel free to subscribe. I post DIY videos every Thursday. And don't forget, if you want to see how to make one of your own needle felting surfaces, then stay tuned next week and I'll be showing you guys how to make one for yourself. You can follow me on Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, or Pinterest. I'll leave the information to those down below. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please leave a comment down below. And I'll see you next week.